Let's say hi. Hi. What are we making? Um, I don't know. What are we making? Um, are you seeing? Say tamales. Tamales. Tamales! We haven't made tamales in forever. You excited? Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Daddy's excited. Yeah. So we're making tamales today. Now I normally make this like on Fridays or Saturdays because it does take a very long time to do it, traditionally. But with the Instant Pot, it cuts it like in half. So I'm going to be making red chili pork tamales for dinner tonight. Alright, so I have my five pound Boston butt. You can cut it into chunks. Mine and mine's actually frozen right now, which it doesn't make a big deal, but you need to have a pork shoulder, Boston butt, whatever. You're gonna wanna pop it in here and you're going to want to cover it with salt and pepper and your choice of seasoning. Now you can do Chipotle, that's what I normally do, but we got this in the mail. So this is uh, crispy mango habanero so we're gonna try that today and see how it works with our tamales so I have my ground black pepper in there I'm going to put salt in here I have one cup of chicken stock that is going in here just to give it a little moisture and then we are going to lock and load this guy. We're going to go pressure cook, high pressure for 90 minutes. It'll beep at me three times to let me know it's starting. We'll let it get to pressure and then when it's done, we'll let it sit for 20 minutes. So it'll say L0020, and then we will release all the pressure. What I have here is a bowl of warm water, and I'm going to take my corn husk, and I'm going to separate them, and then I'm going to submerge them under the water and let them soak for about 30 minutes or so. I want them nice and pliable because we're going to be rolling and I want them to be able to roll and not break. So how do I keep these down so they will soak? Well, I use my trusty little glass bowl right here. So I've taken my pork butt out. I'm letting it cool because I tried to start shredding it and it is super, super, super hot. So I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. And over here, I've got in my enamel pan, I'm going to seed and stem. Um, these are the, these New Mexico chilies. So you're gonna need four of them. And then these are the guajillo chilies. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm probably butchering that. Um, but what I'm gonna do, same thing, is I'm going to de-seed them and I'm going to take the stems off and then I'm gonna chop these into like half inch pieces and pop them in just to toast them for like three minutes at the most, maybe pushing five, just depends on your oven and your stove top. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to take one large onion and I am going to chop this bad boy up. Now, in my family, I love onions, 
but some people don't. So I'm only going to use half of this. But the actual recipe calls for you to use the entire onion. Now I'm going to put three tablespoons of olive oil in here. Then I'm going to add my onions and I'm going to cook them about five to seven minutes until they're nice and soft. You don't want them caramelized, you just want them nice and soft. They are nice and soft. They're not quite brown, which is what you want, right in here. So now we're going to add in six large cloves of garlic. Large cloves of garlic, if I can talk today, um, but you can cheat like I did and get them minced already. So you're gonna put that in there. And you're also going to put one teaspoon of cumin in. And you're gonna mix this up real quick. We're going to let this kind of melt together for about a minute or so. And just kind of let it do its thing. Now we're going to add three cups of chicken broth to the pot. And yes, I'm using store bought because our chicken broth, I've used it all up. So now we've got to go and raise up those chickens and butcher them so I can get some more stuff. So now I'm going to let this simmer for about 10 minutes and then we'll go on to the next step. But I'm going to give it a quick stir before I let it sit. I'm going to turn off the heat and then I'm going to add one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. And then I'm going to add in our toasted chilies. Now this is where I use a ladle. I'm going to ladle it into my blender and then I'm going to blend until it is almost a, a puree, I guess. It's a sauce. You don't, if you don't want chunks in it, blend it even more, but it's really your preference. You want it to be a sauce consistency. Just so you know, this is extremely hot. So I'm going to put the lid on top and then I'm gonna put a towel on top of that because it is really, really hot. It's done! So yeah, it definitely comes out super hot. Super hot. So I've got my little pork. Put it in my bowl. All I'm going to do is pour this in to here and mix it up. And that is my red chili pork. Now you can use this for tamales, you can use this for tacos, you can use this for anything really. I'm going to combine these two and then I'm going to pop them in tamales. So I made the masa for the tamales and I just went off what the direction said. This, this is the consistency that we got. Now we're gonna try the water test. Now what this means is if I take a little bit of this and I plop it in here, if it sinks, I need to add more water. If it floats, then it is perfect and it's ready for tamales. and it's floating. So this is the perfect consistency. I have dried off my corn husk. You want them to be pretty dry. You try to get as much moisture off of them as possible. And then you're gonna take a big dollop of your masa, and that one's a little small. Let's get a bigger one. Let's show y'all. You're gonna spread this out, and then, whoop, dogs will get that. 
It happens. You're going to squish it out like that. Now sometimes, it's been a while since I've done this, it was supposed to come straight off. And sometimes you just have to finagle it. Some people say it's easier to do it like this. It really just depends on you. And I have to go in here sometimes and pat it out. You want it to be about four inches wide and about half an inch thick. You don't want it to, uh, you want it to kind of be a square. Then you take some of your red chili pork and you pop it on there, about a tablespoon or two. And then you're going to take it and roll it like that. This one is a small one. So the kids will probably eat that. Fold that up. Take a really small corn husk, pull it off, tie it up. I'm gonna make some bigger ones. And then you'll stick it in your instant pot like that, straight up. So I've got all the tamales in here now, and I'm going to lock this down. Got kids playing. And we're gonna set this for high pressure, 20 minutes. So after that happens, we are going to let it sit for 10 minutes and then release the pressure. Then remove all of the tamales out onto a baking sheet or a plate and let them sit for 20 to 30 minutes. If you don't let them sit for the 20 to 30 minutes, that is a crucial part. Um, the, the masa has to like firm up after being cooked, so you definitely want to let it sit. Now, I'm going to clean up my mess. No. Okay, they're done. So we've let them sit for about 20 minutes and these two are ready to eat. Dig in. You struggling there? Yeah, just make sure you remove the husk. I know Do you remember someone, Katie doing that? I know somebody who ate the husk. <laughs> Do you remember when Katie did that? Yeah. That was funny. <laughs> They've already demolished half of them. 